since this celebration kick-started, uh, what uh, positive uh, you know, impact has it had on the African child? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, the African child, especially the uh, feminine gender, mm. suffer a lot of, um, most of them, not all, suffer a lot of segregation. Uh, you know, this um, gender uh, equality that we have been clamoring on, some people used to discriminate, mm. you know, against the girl child uh, because of the sex, you know. Uh, they give preference, preference to the boy child, thinking that the boy child is superior to girl child. Most of these people that think that way, they debar the girl child the rights to education, the right of having um, equal, that is, having equal right with the male counterpart. Because uh, the constitution says that you don't discrimi uh, discriminate against a child because of his or her sex. So it has to be, there has to be a kind of balance, you know, what you give to the boy child, you, you make sure it goes to the girl child, especially in areas of education, um, attainment, that is being able to assess um, um, anything that is, uh, that has to do with rights. Okay. It has uh, simply put having equal opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Having equal opportunity with uh, the male counterpart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so are we talking? Uh, which we are talking about the day of the African child. Yes. You understand. Mm. And then uh, we are talking about um, inequality in gender. We are talking about the child here. Yeah, we are not talking about a specific gender here. Yeah. So I think what is obtainable, the kind of prejudice uh, the girl child suffers, I'm sure male child, male children to do suffer that. But you're more like thinking it's more on the part of the... It depends on her question. Okay, yeah. Now, what I'm trying to say, we are talking about the African child. Generally. Generally, you understand? Mm. The African child, as we all know, Africa, to start with, already have this platform on which they believe that a gender is more superior to the other. Your organization now, based on this time, what are you people doing in order to, let's like say, narrow down that narrative and make them understand or believe that uh, this world, like Chidima rightly said, that equal opportunities should be given to that, so that we move away from this issue of inequality and trying to balance the equation. Okay, uh, my organization, I'm here on dual capacity. I am a feeder, as well as uh, the chairperson, Queen School Oges Association, uh, an Umbra State chapter. chapter. Yes, so uh, we've dealt with this issue of inequality in so many ways. We have been, you know, going on sensitization visit, visits to churches, to the chieftains. When we get there, we tell them that, look, there shouldn't be this uh, uh, preference of a particular sex to the other one. It has to be in equilibrium. You know, what is good for the geese is also good for the uh, uh, gander. Yeah, so uh, we have been doing a lot of sensitization workshops. We have been going uh, from one church to the other, sensitizing them so that they know that uh, the, 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 the male and the female uh, child that there is no difference. It's just a matter of difference in uh, genitals. Do you understand? The other one possesses the long genitals and the other one has an embedded one. That's the only difference. So, rice, they, they, they should have access to equal opportunity. So we have been doing that. FIDA as a body has been going on uh, sensitization uh, visits to schools, churches, um, uh, communities. So this is not the first time people have been hearing about this. Okay. We have been clamoring on it. All right. So let's look at some of the challenges the African child uh, is or is facing today. You talked about education. 
you talked about hunger. Some of them are from a very poor uh, family that they, they barely have a decent meal in a day. We talk of so many the insecurity in our country. We talk about molestation. We talk about uh, uh, sexual violence. And so many of them on the African child. I mean, this day is set aside uh, to see, uh, to bring to the fore some of these challenges these people are facing, that the African child are facing. Now, like I asked earlier, this celebration so far, uh, commemorating this day, bringing out to the fore some of these challenges, how has it helped to, you know, bringing down these challenges that the African child face on a daily basis, especially the vulnerable ones? Thank you. Um, the celebration of uh, the Day of African Child has in no small measure ameliorated the problems of the vulnerable ones. For example, uh, the Ministry of Women uh, Affairs, they usually go on hunts mm. on the streets to capture children of uh, school aid that um, hawk goose around. Yes. You, you know, so they hawk. When, when they get them, they make sure they, they are, you know, um, placed in a very conducive environment to have access to education. Um, a lot of things, um, the, the, the vulnerable ones, like the people that suffer trafficking. It is through this uh, incessant celebration that, is, that comes annually that people are able to see that there are some people passing through this uh, menace of uh, um, trafficking. And it's, you know, uh, because people are aware, because the essence of this celebration is also to create awareness of the problems that this uh, African child is passing through. So um, you see that if you listen to the news, you see that the other day, uh, some a woman, a woman was uh, you know was apprehended. Mm -hmm. She was trying to traffic uh, some uh, you know minors out there, you know, for trafficking sake, and she was apprehended and caught. And uh, those children were retrieved. And the government made sure that they were sent back to the school to have access to uh, education. And a lot of bodies, NGOs, they are coming up to protect these children. Even our laws, we have the Child's Rights Act of 2003. These are the things put in place to check all the uh, problems the African child or even the child is passing. So in those laws, you know, uh, measures are being put down so that anybody that violates it faces the law. Okay. Yeah, faces the weight of the law. So yeah, I, I wanted to add about the domestication of that child rights law, whether it has in, in no way contributed positively to, you know, handling the cases of children that are being abused violently and all that. Mm. Yes, uh, it has been in place. Mm. And, um, you know, but you know that uh, one of the major challenges of our people is um, the culture, the mentality. Mm. Uh, how can a child have, you know, such a right? How can a child, since I gave birth to this child, I have right over this child? So that's where the, all these NGOs, even FIDA, comes in to tell them that this child, these uh, laws are made to guarantee the rights of the child. And when you violate it, it doesn't matter if you are the biological uh, parent, you will be dealt with. Uh, so it has been in place. It has been in place All right. to a great extent. Uh, okay. Let me, let me just, let me just, just add, uh, be, Before you back. ask the question, we have it to take a short break. Okay. Uh, we have to take a short break. And when we come back, uh, Azula already have a question to ask our guests. 1991, the Day of the African Child has been celebrated on June 16th to commemorate students who lost their lives during the Soweto uprising in South Africa and to recognize the courage of the students who marched for their right to an education. On June 16th, 1976, nearly 10,000 black students from Soweto, South Africa, marched the streets to protest the poor quality of their education. They marched as a way to demonstrate their disapproval of the Black Education Act, which segregated students based on their race. 
Hundreds of innocent students were shot by security forces. And in the two weeks of the protests that followed, dubbed the Soweto Uprising, more than a hundred students were killed and thousands were badly injured. The theme is significant for Nigeria because children face widespread violation of their human rights as evidenced by the 2014 National Survey on Violence Against Children, which finds that six out of ten children suffer one form of violence or the other. Although Nigeria adopted the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the African Charter on Rights and Welfare of the Child through the 2003 Child Act, which provides a legal framework for child rights standards and child justice administration in Nigeria, implementation is low and since the adoption of the Act, only 25 out of 36 states have domesticated the law to date. How has that singular Soweto uprising affected positively on the life of the African child? The society no longer takes care of the child as it used to be before. People are only after their own interests. In the process, they stampede on the collective interest of the society. So the African child is at the extreme, the, 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 the receiving end of the negativities of the society. Generally, African children are marginalized. They are not properly cared for. They don't even have good education, not even good food and good environment. These are things that the UN, the government, if parents, adults should look into so that we can do the much we should to protect this, our children. The Day of the African Child is also an opportunity to raise awareness for the ongoing need to improve the education of children living across Africa. It is a need that still very much exists today. Of the 57 million primary school age children currently out of school across the world, over half are from Sub-Sahara Africa. Great news for a number of broadcasting service ABS audience. You can now watch ABS television through any of these ways. Buy a terrestrial antenna and connect to your television. Search ABS Channel 24 Orca or ABS Channel 27 on each. Install Star Times Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 113. Install Metro Digital Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 29. Watch ABS TV on your smart TV or smartphone by downloading a number of broadcasting service app on Google Play Store. Also watch via ABS Facebook page at ABS Radio Television and ABS YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. ABS TV is now also on satellite. You can watch us from anywhere in Nigeria and other African countries. Simply install ViewSat TV decoder or any other free to air decoder and tune into channel 0031. Whichever option you choose, stay abreast of breaking news, documentaries, children's shows, talk shows, comedy, sports, movies, and lots more on your darling TV station. For adverts and programs sponsorship contact 0803-388-8526 or 0806-883-9902 ABS Heartbeat of the East Ndianambra Unapotagola Ibolachi Good morning Ndianambra Welcome to Good Morning Anambra Breakfast TV show on ABS TV Come, let's do it together Bia Kaido Okwa We serve it seasoning hot Health and lifestyle Security Topical issues National development Entertainment and more Welcome to the flagship show where we arm you with the right tools for the day. Keeping you abreast with happenings and information within and beyond the state. There are so many things to gain staying tuned to Good Morning Anambra on ABS TV. Heartbeats of the East. Good Morning Anambra, live on ABS Television, weekdays 7 a.m. to 10 a.m.
Glad to have you back on the show. We are still looking at the topic, the 2023 Day of the African Child. And we've been joined by Right Honorable Victory Ekunife. She is the Speaker of Anambra State Children's Parliament 8th Assembly. Victory, glad to have you. Thank you. Ma. All right. Uh, we are talking about this day. And child, how do you feel about this uh, celebration? This is the first time you're celebrating as the speaker. Yes. Yes. So, tell us what the experience is. It's like yes. Oh, the experience of being a speaker. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has really been a great one, and it's quite a great opportunity, a great opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity to serve, because. It's just like a dream come true in wow. the sense that I've come across children, I see them and I already know this is what we want. And then seeking for a way to bring a stop to most of these ills has always been on my mind. So being in this seat and this, in this position is you now I see those things are now brought to my abode that okay you want to do this you've been looking for a way these things can be resolved so now it's in your courts so that is exactly how i see this and i'm so glad to take it up and follow up everything that i've always had in mind and the things that are already in existence that we see children face mm -hmm. so it's it's not like someone that is just there to occupy the space but to bring a stop to most of the things, most of the ills, and most of uh, what I have been seeing and what I see now. Okay. And to stand as a very good representative as the voice of the children of Anambra State. Okay, we'll still come back to you so that you tell us what your uh, agenda or what you have in plan for the 8th Assembly. Yeah, before we went on the break and the popular street walk, I had a question in mind to ask uh, Honorable Phoebe, JP, you understand? The question I was about to ask was, uh, the UNESCO Child Act and that of the African Child, are they in sync or you guys are operating just on the African Child? Okay, um, it is an extension. The, uh, that is, Child Rights Act is an extension that everything is a kind of compendium of what the UNESCO's Act had and that of our own, you know, considering the environment. So it is uh, everything pertaining to the rights of the child as re it relates to our own locale. They are all comprised in that child rights. Act. It's, it's just a compendium mm -hmm. of the rights of the child. How much is the government helping in trying to make the job easy for the African child, um, Nigeria, in retrospect? Okay, uh, they have been trying. For example, in Anambra State, particularly here in Anambra State, a court has been established. Yes. A special court has been established. And in this court, the children, uh, when we have uh, matters as regards to the minors or the children, yeah, yeah it is being paid. That is a special kind of um, uh, concern and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yes, a special kind of concern is being paid on these areas. You don't just come, you know, because why I say a special kind of concern, if it is an adult, everything will be heard yeah, in the public. The concern you're talking about is, is it quick judgment on cases rather not, than having backlog of cases? Not necessarily. Uh, uh, okay, it's that part one it, is yeah? part of it. Yeah. Yeah, it is dispensed of. That is immediately. It's giving accelerated hearing and everything is discussed. But wh what I'm saying, you know, when it has to involve the child, you know, it's not done in the open okay. court. Yeah. It has, it's, that's why I say a special kind of concern. So court. they've already started, it is in force here in Anambra State. I'm not even talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about Anambra State to tell you that, you know, we have uh, moved on. All right, let's come back to you, um, Victory. Um, okay, 
uh, just like you said earlier that this is something you had wanted to do all your life i mean being the speaker of the eighth assembly children's parliament actually and this is what you have always wanted to do i mean you if you had seen the pictures we had here you see the picture of beautiful faces of children african children but then again it breaks my heart when you see that some of these people are out of school children some of them they don't even have uh, they are not even sure of their daily meal on a daily basis and we have a whole lot of challenges that these children are faced with now you already know these challenges as a child and then now as a speaker of the eighth parliament what are those things that you are you've put in place or you are planning to do as a speaker to see that the plight of those children you mean uh, it's uh, be, i mean what they're going through is being reduced so that they can still have the same equal opportunity as a child we can see see in the european countries and other places okay so talking on this i will want to narrow it down to um sending children back to school some of them were once in school and they dropped out along the line, whereas some of them have never been in school. Mm -hmm. So the plan now, we had our sitting on the 26th of May. That was the first, my first sitting as the speaker. And after the sitting, we resolved that part of the duties of the Ocha Brigade should be to withdraw these children from the streets. Street, okay. So, but there's another thing accompanied to that. If all the children in Anambra State that are in the streets should be withdrawn, where will they be kept? There are uh, many instances when they are withdrawn, they are taken to the Ministry of Women Affairs. But it seems like it's just done in one area, in Okahe. Because if you have to withdraw all the children that are found in Onicha, especially the main market, where will they be kept? And just withdrawing them is not enough. The excuses that parents tend to make and guardians, because most of these children that are found in the streets are not their legitimate parents that send them to the streets. Most of them are uh, maybe their parents or they are from very poor backgrounds and a relative decided, okay, let me take care of this child. I will send her to school. That's always a promise. But then they don't stay and keep to these promises. So if these children are withdrawn from the streets, there needs to be something else that will be done to them. What of their education? Since the, the prevalent reason for sending these children to the streets is mostly because of the economy. We cannot uh, deny that fact. But then there is another question. If these children are sent to the streets to hawk pure water and all that, how much do they get? How much do they get from hawking pure water? Can it be enough to settle their fees? So most of these things, that very reason is not really cogent enough because they can't even settle their fees with what they get from this pure water as a cell. So when you talk about economy, yes, we know it's part of it. But then, Children cannot, you know, there are some parents that will say that when they were smaller, when they were younger, that they helped their parents. But then you're not really helping the child by sending the child to the streets during school hours. That child cannot be what you as a parent want him to be by that single thing. So then what is the plan? Mm. We've, I met with the governor on May, May 27th, being the Children's Day, during the celebration at Equipment School. And he said that his office is open to us. So we should come and we we'll sit down and have this kind of discussion. And we are working towards that. Okay. We've not gone, but we're working towards it. And what we are bringing up now is, it's, it's in the law, it's in the child's rights law that children should, they have right to free and compulsory basic education. And when we're talking about this, we're talking about from nursery 1 to GSS 3. And we know the government can do something about that. If these children are withdrawn, their parents should be called. Their parents, even their legitimate parents should be called. And then they should know, okay, what's actually the reason? Most of them, you hear parents say that this is just kind of punishment. That, okay, you, you know, there are some guardians that are so, I don't really know, that I'm punishing this child, you will not go to school for a week. 
okay. as a punishment. So, but in cases that economy is the issue, then the government should make provision, should make provision. And I think there should be a proposal that should even go through the state house of assembly because if we are dealing with just the governor, if another governor should come up, then it won't be called upon okay, again. So these are the things you still have in pipeline when you go and meet, to meet the governor. So yes, you table yes. down all those things, okay? That's uh, a good plan. Well, at this juncture, let us call for Box for Family Park to continue on the 2023 day of the African child. Stay with us. Don't touch that time. Uh, there are a lot of ways we can eliminate harmful practice against our children, uh, especially uh, these days where we have um, a lot of uh, social vices. Not just that, we have a lot of uh, the social, the craze for social media where children are being exposed to a lot of things in the social media. But I think um, uh, our, our parents, our parents in particular, need to you know, do a lot to help eliminate these um, uh, problems for our children, especially people who, uh, some people who go to take children from other people, probably as house helps, as, um, and they are not engaged in schools. You know, we leave them there. They, they, we sometimes use them to hawk uh, on the streets, you know, for, for our own benefits as parents, you know. Uh, you know, those things are not uh, very good. We expose, this, we expose our children to a lot of uh, these uh, vices. Sometimes uh, the female uh, children could, in the process of hawking some of these things, be raped. You know, some of them could be victims of accidents, you know, in the process. Some of them could be victims of uh, ritual killings, you know, and the likes of them. So um, the government actually needs to come in. And the parents as well need to come in, need to actually know that we should as, uh, know that any child, whether ours or the ones that we bring in as a house help, are, belongs to someone. They are children and they should be properly taken care of. Not that you can eliminate it totally, but you can just reduce it, you know, and it can help. Like, we should be security conscious of our children, you understand? Like some of us now, carelessly, we, especially our parents, we will see a parent walking on the road. You won't even care that you are going with your child. You understand? So many things like before you like some schools, before you hand over a child to somebody, you must be mind as you will know the person very well before handing over the children. After giving birth to your children, it is better you raise your kids yourself. Uh -huh. Create time for your children so that each given moment you know what is happening to them because these days when you give out your children maybe to go stay with people that's when molestation start coming in child labor start sending them to sell on the street which is not good so it is better even if it is gary you see drink with your children and raise them yourself create time for them give them listening yeah, these are what children so that they will be free with you understand to tell you whatever is going on with them bringing it down to our time the African children, they will have a lot of harmful practices that is being done. Example, uh, circumcision of the female child, which is a, a harmful practice. So, first of all, how we can eliminate these things is, first, we must enlighten the people that all these things cuts, uh, brings pain to the female child, as well as hard labor. These are one of the the, the, the practices that is being done to the African child. So basically, the African children, they, they, they are plight. You know, some of them are being sent to the streets. Some of them are the breadwinners of the family. Some of them are underaged. Some of them are underaged. So the government should take the sole responsibility to ensure that no African child is under such painful practices um, finally that the african child we must also bring to the notice of the children that they can make a change so on this note this is what i have to say on the plight of the african child and how to alleviate such 
change that has proven problematic in our community. All right, you're welcome back to the program. We're still looking at the day of the African child is being commemorated every 16th of June. And we are here today uh, because today is the 16th of June 2023. And uh, we've heard what the, our respondents have to say concerning the plight of the African child. A whole lot, a whole lot of challenges we have mentioned uh, on the street walks. On, even the last person mentioned the female circumcision, uh, the, uh, the child labor, uh, then going out there, sending your child or children to go out there to hawk in the street. And so many inhuman acts are being meted on the African child. And then we ask again why then should someone bring out a child to the world and you know want the child to go through this just like the speaker mentioned earlier some parents will tell you that this is how they survived when they were small so it's like okay this is what happened to me it must happen to my child why don't you plan to give your children a better future i mean these are the things we have to discuss i know that government will uh, have a huge role to play but what about the parents what about the guardian what about the people that you go to uh, uh, to a village and bring out and bring a child and you know that the child that you can't or you won't or you don't even want to send the child to go to school or you promise the parents of this ones that you are going to do that and when you bring the child to the city to the urban area you send him or her to go out there to start hawking or sometimes some people we even talk about trafficking and all that and you know using them for sexual business and so many of them but then still on all this challenge because we've talked about it and we've talked about how we can see that we cough them let's look at the theme of this year's celebration we're talking about the right of the child in the digital environment of course the world is going digital so how do we use this theme the theme of this year's commemoration yeah to set the record straight when it comes to protecting the right of the african child okay thank you um the theme of uh this year's uh, celebration couldn't have uh, been said better. Uh, it came at a most suspicious time when the world is going digital. Um, the African child has, uh, you know, they're supposed to have, you know, the African child should have the right to access to uh, internet. And that is exactly what is happening. Today. But you see, rights are not absolute. You know, right? Every right that the human enjoys is not absolute. There must be a kind of restriction. For example, these artificial intelligence. If you ask a child now, what is a amoeba? You know, I, you know, she, you know, because of this idea that I have. Um, the artificial um, uh, intelligent uh, uh, app in my phone. The child will not, you know, like to go and research and know what an amoeba is. What she does or what he does is to run to the app to start searching. And uh, but that one is okay because uh, it develops the idea of uh, researching. But you see, this particular access to internet. You see a lot of things going wrong. A child is uh, uh, pornography is made, is made uh, you know uh, so you know transparent to a child, even if it is the child is still in her you know a minor. A child now knows that uh, uh, there is something like homosexuality, lesbianism, because she has the right, you know that right that I'm talking about. And so uh, the right has to be in positive way. It has to be operated in positive way. And I want to make it ca uh, categorically clear that no right is absolute. That is where the idea of censorship comes in. Yes, it is not everything that is in the internet that the child should have access to. For example, there is a site you go to your internet, it's all about pornography. So, is, uh, because the child should have right to access to internet, is that the reason why she should also ha have the right to, you know, enter into pornography site? You know, because of that right. That's why I say that that right is good because we are in the digital um, era. 
you know, as regards uh, making uh, researches and all whatnot. But there are the negative sides of these rights. That is where uh, the censorship law should come in to curb their excesses. Thank you. Yeah, uh, when you're talking about mm. the necessary laws to curb it and everything like that, at what age do you think an African child should be exposed to the use of internet? Well, because the world has gone digital, uh, even children now has as uh, 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 so. Uh, but naturally, if you ask me, uh, from 18 years, 18 years by law is the uh, adult adult age. That is majority. When a child has a 10 majority age, 18 years. But even that 18 years is still a child. For me, oh. Apart, apart from the law, even okay. that 18 years is still a child because I could still remember when, uh, you know, I was growing up, I was 18, I didn't know anything pertaining to sex and all what not. But you see, we are not even comparing where you were growing up and yeah, what yeah, right years, now. 18 Again, years. I get your point. Yeah. But we have a, a child here, so to say, we have Victory <laughs> seated with us right here. Okay. Now, she has been mentioned of less, just to uh, bring it down to advantage and disadvantages of the internet, social media. Of course, we mentioned that the world is going digital. Now, as a, as a child, would you, also, would you agree that it's forcing children to, I mean, the social media the internet that in some way it could uh, bring out or make them act in a negative way. Do you think that the negative impact outweighs the positive impact? Okay. Um, talking on that, everything has advantage and disadvantage. So it's not left for you to choose the side you want to follow. But I think the reason why children are exposed more to the disadvantages of the social media and internet and all that is because we've not really channeled what is happening, especially in academics. You know, it seems like we cannot even put a stop to the use of internet by children. We, it can't happen. Remember that it seems like we are trying to, you know, bring to one kind of equality between the African child and the Western child. So I will not be uh, behind. But then, that difference is that the Western child, when you even go to their classrooms, they make use of the internet. And um, Elia said that the children have grown up to love money. So even when you send them to school, some of them might still say, okay, I don't want to. I heard of a story, a, a, I think, 200-level student that told his parents, they should stop wasting their money, that he is not ready to go to school, that he wants to chase after money. And it's because we've not taken these academics to that digital side. I know the Americans, and when you bring their children, even what they study, they take it to the internet and they still make money with what they are studying. But it's not found in this side of side of the world. When you go to the, the schools, it's just everything is just written and oral. So you're saying that we should mo do more advocacy in internet teaching in our schools and not consider the ugly side it might have on our children. Yeah. The, is that what you're saying? It, yes. Yes, because it's, it, it's um, should I say, it's where you channel a child to. We cannot channel children out of internet. That's what I'm saying. I mean, nobody's talking about yes, children out of internet. You're rather talking about the ugly side when there is no censorship on what a child does. Remember, children are more curious than adults. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. When a child knows that with just typing a particular thing on the internet, it gives him or her, you understand, what he or she is looking for, who is there to restrict that? That is what we're talking about. And that's why they say there are certain things children shouldn't be exposed to. Okay, if I, if I understand what you're saying, you're now saying that it is important to start early to introduce children to the internet, but let's start teaching them uh, you know, how to operate internet when they are very little and let's focus on education so that their mind will be basically on education. 
Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Yeah. Because if I understand, she's now saying that because we're now teaching them through the uh, internet and all that. So once they get hold, what they learn is the negative aspect. Of course, they want to make money or they want to go to porn site. But when you channel their education, every learning, every learning tools is on the internet. Once they see the internet, they will think what comes to mind first is education, learning, and not the negative aspect. Right. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Somebody will definitely cross our board. But then, uh, with, because of want of time, let us just uh, quickly... Um, let me ask you, um, Obin MF, Phoebe, where do you see the African child in the next, will I say, 10 to 20 years, based on the topic we're talking about today, African child and the, the digital world? Okay. Um, I would like to sound uh, positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the next 20 years, the African child will go places. The African child will be um, exceptionally good in her field of study. Do you understand? Because of access to internet. I see the Afri African child making a wave across the globe because of the access to internet. Because it is through the internet you connect the world. It is through the internet you get access to the very uh, essence of education. It is through the uh, uh, in, uh, internet that you are heard. If it is not because of this television, we cannot be heard. So I see the African child making it, that is, I don't know, I see the African child excelling. That's the point I'm trying to say in the next 20 years. Okay, Richie. Our um, things being here, Paul. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richie, we've talked about so many things, and uh, basically why we are here today is just to bring to the fore so most uh, the challenges that uh, most African child uh, are facing in our world today. Now, what are the responsibilities of the government? What are the responsibility of the stakeholders? the society at large to see that will shape the African child to become, of course, we are trying to emulate the Western child, right? But in such a way that the African child will be given the basic things that he or she needs to develop and become a better citizen of the society. What actors do we have to come in to play that positive role to see that some of those challenges that we have enumerated here that it will be reduced because I, I don't see all of them going away but to reduce to the, at least uh barest minimum okay now let me start with the roles of the government as i said earlier that sending children to school especially those that are out of school already due to lack of funds mm -hmm. for the school fees and all that. And we even know education now is even so expensive. You can even hear that this school tuition is free. But what you will be asked to pay for would even be more than the tuition itself. So the government should come in here. If there is, if there is provision for free and compulsory universal basic education, then there should also be provision for the funding. Yes, this, this, is, this is a responsibility the government now should pick up. Okay. There should be a means for the funding. I'm talking about the roles of the society at large. When we're talking about um, both sexual molestation, child abuse, the society can help curb these things. We know that, I personally, I know that the commissioner for um, women affairs, she's really, really trying, she's trying and there are some of these cases that she won't know about unless someone reports. And now the duty of the society and the members of the community and the states is you know of something. You know that this child is being abused on a daily basis. Now, it's now your responsibility to bring it, bring it up. Most of these children are scolded and said, if I hear this sit outside, you are done. So now, it's the duty of the members of um, the state to, just like the governor said, that there, there ought to be a call line. There ought to be a call line for reports of most of these cases. So as 
you are a neighbor to um, a child that is being abused, it's your duty now to bring it up to the government. If nobody is aware of it, there is no way a solution can be provided. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I think on that note, we'll definitely say thank you uh, to our guest this morning on the topic, the 2023 Day of the African Child. A lot has really been said. And uh, there was one that really caught my attention, where you see something go wrong to a child, say something. And that's even the mantra of our state uh, governor, uh, the professor. Uh, Chukuma Soludo there. And quickly, we want to thank you all for being here. Uh, Victory Ekunife, uh, thanks for honoring this invitation of being here today to talk about the African child. I will wish you uh, many wisdom in your legislative uh, job in the uh, child parliament. And then Chidema. Okay, we want to say a very big thank you to uh, His Honor Obineme Phoebe Chinago, JP. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. All right, um, well, that's it on the show this morning. We want to say a very big thank you to all of you for being part of the show. Uh, and also, we know that uh, we are talking about uh, the Day of African Child. Yes, mm -hmm. it is commemorated today. Just to let you know that we all have a role to play to see that African Child, you know, get the basic needs, the basic, and everything he or she needs to be a good citizen of any uh, uh, country. Let's not just uh, basically uh, make it in Nigeria mm -hmm. affair because we're talking about African child. Thank you so much for being part of the show. My name is Chidema Orangwa. Have a lovely weekend. And I'm Adul Tugwa